How's it going? This is Chris from the uh, Red 3 Image Studio, a.k.a. my basement. Um, and this is our first podcast episode. Um, it's about Sunday night, about 6 o'clock, and we're ready to kick this off. So just welcome everybody to the new show. And uh, hopefully we'll be doing a few more episodes over the next few weeks. And uh, with some friends of mine giving some pretty good support out there, we're going to... Uh, rock a few of these episodes out together. So stay tuned. And uh, what we have tonight, I have a a good friend of mine. His name is Tony Brandon. We grew up together way back in the high school days. And he's just recently decided to work on his first independent film. So I got him down here with me this evening. And we're going to go ahead and talk a little bit about that. Um, Like y'all know me, the man, the myth, the legend. (laughs) Go ahead and introduce yourself, man. How's it going? Oh, good, good. Uh, like you said, Tony Brandon, uh, Chris and I met, I think I was, I had to be 14, maybe 15, because Chris is about, what's you, about a year and a half older than I am? Ish, yeah. Because, uh, a little more gray hair on bottom, but. Uh... <laughs> right. <laughs> we went to go see a movie. I think it was, uh, what was it, uh, The Lost Boys? Oh, God. Now, that might have been a little bit before that. I don't know. We went. I, I remember. I remember. We, we were going to see a movie because Tim Scott introduced us. We went out to the movies, and I think we went to go see Lost Boys. Okay. You know, and of course, Lost Boys. You know, for anybody who remembers that, it was a long time ago. Oh Everybody in the Lost Boys who's still alive from that movie looks old as dirt now. <laughs> even the even the kids. You saw a kid in that movie. That kid is, is, is a great grandfather now. But. Um, yeah, from high school to life changes, Chris, you being in the military, uh, me trying to save the world, going across the, uh, the United States, cleaning up garbage and trying to get people to think better about themselves, and then making my way back to uh, back to Michigan. Um, and here we are. Uh, I'm a musician. That's what my, uh, my father taught me how to do, was to play music, right. you know, instruments, guitar, sing, write. However, uh, our mutual friend Tim Scott said he wanted me to write something and he was going to film it. So uh, he gave me some parameters of what he had to work with, a few actors, um, and a rural area, and you know, we came up with a pretty a great story that I uh, I really believe in, and it was uh, it's been an interesting it's been an interesting trip because you know. I want to make sure that everyone involved that put their time and effort into it, you know, we actually get to see a finished product. So all of this is new to me. And I could tell you how to write a song, record it, and mix it. But um, I can't tell you how to make a film. So, you know, it's all new to me. Well, I but, know uh, this is um, a new venture and everything. Um, just real quick, though, just give us like a kind of an idea of what type of film it is and, and you know, kind of a little bit of a story of it give everybody an idea well the film the film does fall into the realm of supernatural thriller because you have an individual who lives a regular life that um comes across some extraordinary circumstances where he does some terrible things in the name of self-preservation you know and what he learns um in the conclusion of the film is something about himself that he would never ever learned if he didn't go through it right you know, so, uh, and it's a short film, and um, we are in the building process of it, um, but that's about as much as I can say about it without giving it, a, you know, giving it I away, you. you know. I got you. Yeah, you don't want to give out too giving much. Giving it away. Did you, um, are you currently have anybody, you know, for as far as casting goes, or are you still sort of, you know, mapping that out or trying to get people to I have, audition? I whatever. have about 14 or 15 people that have expressed interest. Okay. Um, uh, there's a Facebook group called uh, Michigan Actors. Uh, quite a few of them um, from the different groups have expressed interest. So okay. I've been keeping them abreast of the situation. You know, we're looking at doing our auditions um, probably somewhere in mid-April. And, okay. and if all goes well, we can select a cast. We don't need a lot of people, but we right. can select a cast. Um and then we'll be able to start filming in May. Yeah, we talked about um, yeah. tr- probably doing maybe some auditions down here or whatever, just to have everybody in a yeah, you know, a quiet location and, and yeah. everybody can interact and everything. But that's cool. That's cool though. Um, 
you guys figure out a place for your location where you guys are going to shoot yet, or is that still kind of, you know, in the Well, range? um... Anthony Richendahler reached out to me the other day and said that he has a nephew that may be interested. Okay. Um, so Anthony uh, stays out on some land in, uh, in Sumter. His family got some land. Oh, that's not far. Yeah, we're good. My family as well. Um, so I'm going to talk to uh, I'm going to talk to both. You know, see what we can do because there's opportunities to film the landscape. Because in essence, this guy lives in a country area. He's a construction guy. Right. So what we need to see is, you know, some some wide open spaces, a combination of wide open spaces and a combination of industrial buildings, okay. you know. So I'm pretty optimistic between the between the, uh, those two locations, and if not, you know, I got a third person that lives across the street. Okay. Well, <laughs> what what better place, right? You don't have to travel too far. No. Uh. Uh-uh. Oh man. Well, that's awesome, man. I'm glad to hear you got something sort of kicking off. I figured you mentioned April because the weather will hopefully be getting a little warmer too. So well, yes. What I didn't want to do, um, the film, the film doesn't really uh, gel that well mm-hmm. with snow and ice on the ground. Mainly because one of the primary fixtures in the film, you have to be able to see it clearly. So okay. let's say if we're trying to film, we're trying to make you know we're trying to keep people's interest because this is a you know, this is one of those things that we call in the entertainment business pro bono. So everybody that's involved is involved to build up their resume, and everybody understands that. You know, so I don't want to have people out there working for, uh, you know, food, candy, and gas money right. with, with rain bouncing Which off their typical foreheads. typical when you're, you know, doing startup you know, so whatever, I figure if we start filming in May, we can have some, we can have some better chances of, uh, of good weather. Okay. Um, Bonus. And then um, some clearer days to film because there's going to be some significant uh, shots that are going to have to take place mm-hmm. outside. Okay. Um, you know, so I think that'll be you know that'll be uh, optimal. You know, the, the oh, yeah. starting in May. I yeah. agree. The the better the climate, the better the uh, the conditions and the attitudes of your actors involved. I know it, it can become yeah. a painful you know thing if you guys are sitting out there take after take and you're freezing your ass off. I mean, it's. I have I have one experience with actual filming a music video oh, in yeah. California, and I was in California. Um, I was probably from twenty one to twenty six, so that was nineteen ninety five to nineteen ninety nine. Right. There was a there was a brief stint of time where I was working with uh, a group. Their uh, their name their name now is Black Planet. You know, you know they used to be called the Mystics. It was a bunch of us, which was common because of the Wu Tang Clan. There were a lot okay. of different people who had maybe five, six guys. Some even had fifty or sixty people. Yeah. I say at the most we probably had thirty or forty people in five or six different groups. Okay. So we went to a music video where one of the guys was invited, and at first I thought it was really cool because we saw some. Um, Classic hip hop, you know, old hip hop, the Booyah Tribe. I don't know if you heard of the Booyah oh. Tribe. Their um, Booyah Tribe was a uh, all Samoan uh, rap group, and you know they're really big guys. So they they do they do um, like bodyguard okay. type shots when they 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 were portraying bodyguards. And the, uh, the artist, she she uh, she probably barely qualified as a one hit wonder, but we were there from 10 a.m. to 5 a.m. the next day. Oh, man. And the only reason we were there is because this girl wanted to get some contraband onto the set. She figured if she gets some people that raps, she'd be able to get some weed and some alcohol right. onto the set because her management didn't want that there. And the year that this happened, this was when Jordan came back. After he retired, returned back to the Bulls, goes to the playoffs. That was the summer. You know, so there was, it was a long time ago. And like I said, at first it was so cool because you see the cameras, you see the film crew. Um, you know, the dancers, yeah. you know, we're all thinking like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to push up on that girl. I'm going to talk to that girl. And it, But, man, we sat there for so long, we literally fell asleep. Oh, we thought we were going to make some connections, talk to some people. Yeah, that did And it was like, man, can we get the hell out of here? You know? And then the thing that he got to do, the person who actually got invited, because they let him bring his whole crew. His dancing was so bad, and I'm not going to mention his name. <laughs> his dancing was so bad, as they say uh, in film, and ended up on the cutting room floor. Oh, gee. <laughs> they, couldn't, they couldn't get him to catch the beat. Does that surprise you, though? I mean, you know. 
Well, with him, I mean, he's probably one of the, as far as people I've ever heard in person, mm -hmm. he's one of the greatest MCs that I've heard just to flow off the top of their head. And right. he had another guy, the two of them could freestyle together. That's hard to do. Yeah. When you're freestyling is one thing, but you have a good freestyle and yeah. you can freestyle out. Because I used to do stuff like uh, I bring people to him. I said, hey, we got this guy, you know, I met him at the mall. He said he could rap. He said, okay. All right, so we have a test. Throw right. a beat on. And then I was like, all right, so y'all going to freestyle. And back in this time, if you didn't freestyle, you weren't you weren't, in, you weren't worth oh, nothing. Yeah. So I said, okay, so you're going to freestyle about a red Corvette, um, a stupid girl, and a banana peel or whatever. So you had to incorporate that into something that made sense. Yeah. And this dude couldn't do it. Uh -oh. So he was out. But those two, the, it was these two guys, they, they just, you know, they, like I said, they're called Black Planet, but they just... They just tore that to pieces, man. But dancing, no. No, no. No dancing. No dancing then. No, no dancing. No, not, none of your... Yeah, but uh, I, was, I was amazed at how long it took to film five minutes worth of film. It, when, you're, when you're new or don't have any kind of clue on how to do any of that, it's, it's damn near impossible to get anything done. Because everybody's just like, you know, let's just... Everything's winging everything. You know, all you're doing is just random. So nobody has any plan. You don't have a plan, you don't have a project. Well, they literally copied the premise of Usual Suspects. Okay. You know, so from the uh, the jet plane um, to, the to you know, riding in the limo. I mean, she, the, the artist, she she wanted to have the feel of the Usual Suspects. Yeah. And I'm like, how does that make any sense to this song? But either way, you know, we got as, we got as full as we could on, uh, on broccoli and... Uh, Sour cream, whatever stuff, whatever stuff they were eating, we were eating. No, no catering, no. Uh, what do they call those honey wagons? You had the. No, they had the the catering. Special... They had, they had the, they had the food layout, but it was like That's real, better. real cheap stuff. Yeah. It was just, just garden variety oh. rabbit food with sauce, oh, you know. But with that being said, I'd like to try to plan this as best as I possibly can there because everybody go. that went to that place got paid. <laughs> You know, so they're they're right. literally sitting there on their hands to get paid. But right. this time, you know, I, I like to try to make it as as pleasant as possible. I figure if they get a professional experience, uh, this is their first time working with mm -hmm. me, working with us. They'll yeah. come back. You know, um, and who knows? You know, the the purpose of doing this is not to do something like, "Ooh, this is fun." We're gonna make something. Right. We're going to uh, market it, and we're going to you know get it to show. In a movie theater or a network, you know okay. this is. That was my next question. Actually, I was going to ask yeah. if you had sort of a plan on how you were trying to get this out there, whether you're screening it or film fest. I mean, there's a whole planet of things you could do, but did you have like a specific focus in mind to like what you were trying to do with this particular project? Once the product has been finished editing and mixed and it's ready to be submitted, I have uh, a friend of mine, his wife's cousin. She works for. Uh, um, either a Lifetime or Hallmark. I can't remember which one. Like so, a cable channel sort of setup? Yeah. Or, okay. So I'll send, you know, through him to the cable channels, um, all of the social social websites, Pinterest, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, you know, everything you can imagine. Mm -hmm. And then all the relative film festivals that I can get registered for in time. Okay. You know, that'll, that'll all depend on when the product is finished. Okay. You know, but um, I want to get it seen as uh, as many times and as by as many people as possible. Okay. You know? Now, when you say short film, do you mean like, is this like a 15, 20 minute film or like maybe even an hour? I mean, because there's different, you know, everybody's got a different version or timeline for is what you I want to get it done you? within 20 minutes. A 20, okay. You know, the, the, the purpose of this film is, I like to call it an entertaining teaser. Okay. You know, you can watch it long enough where you can actually connect with the characters. Okay. But then once you get to the point where you get to the um, the cliffhanger, that's where it ends. So you know, it's almost like a pilot, in, yep. in a sense, yep. except just a shorter version of. Yep. The that's the way. That's the way it's going to flow. Is like a pilot. Right. Um, I've discussed the story with you. Mm -hmm. All the details that I've discussed with you, none of that can un all of that can unfold in okay. the fifteen or twenty minutes. Oh no, yeah, that's why yeah. you got to give them like right as much as you can in a short time, and then boom. Right, know. it's going to build up, and then it's going to stop. And it's like, oh, what happens next? I said, okay, let's talk, let's produce, let's let's create. Sounds good to me, man. Well, I hope your uh, script is almost done. I know you emailed it. I didn't have a chance to 
read this the, the next batch you sent me, but um, I'm hoping we get to chopping away at it here quickly. So. You know, we can get this thing out there for you. Yeah, it's Better gonna. The script is gonna be completed um, before uh, before the end of March, okay. for sure. Uh, I, I, you know, you know, when, when you're writing, you hit a rhythm and then you get done. As opposed to you keep thinking about it, thinking about it, right. thinking about it, you never touch it. But once you finally hit that rhythm, you get done with it. So I'm getting to that point because I've never used that system. Okay. I think you have do you have to be do you have to be signed up to that system to view the script? I believe you're supposed to have some sort even if it's a trial thing in order to use like its basic tools. I know you have to be, you know, just a, a basic sign up thing. I'm you know. signed up, but I, the people that I've sent it to, they probably have to do the same thing. All right. I had an o- older version when I did my first full length up here on the wall there, but oh, yeah. they uh there's been a couple versions after abbreviated or updates, or whatever. I haven't okay. seen it okay. since, so I'd probably have to log, re-log in and look at it under your new, uh, you know, format or whatever's up there on the internet now. So, yeah, I will, I'll, I'll, I'll investigate that, um, and I might just need to get another software altogether because I need something that I can put on my, um, you know, my computer or right. laptop at home, and then I can access it because right now I can't access it without some type of internet, okay. internet source, okay. and I, I don't want to rely upon that. I want to have a hard, you know, hard copy, if you will. I got you, man. Well, thanks for talking about the uh, the upcoming film. There, we'll, we're going to talk more about this later, I'm sure, in the next several weeks or so. Yes, that's um, for sure. I'm trying to think. Oh, still, well, we're still throwing out a working title. So the right. the title uh, that's important. <laughs> cur- currently the, the the title is Death Vision. Okay. You know, so that implies some some grim grim circumstances. <laughs> Take note. Right. Death vision. Coming soon. <laughs> yeah. Just had to throw that out there. Um, all right. So what else did I have on a little agenda here? Um, okay. I got to throw this out here because I don't know how up to speed on the Oscars. And I had to throw this out here. Sorry. Um, <laughs> who, do you know or I don't even know the whole broad spectrum of all the categories and that. But do you have a favorite that you want somebody uh, to win tonight? I think it's airing tonight. So it's actually airing tonight. It's tonight Sunday. Yeah, it's, it's on tonight, and we're down here in the basement doing this shit. <laughs> I don't, you know, um, honestly, I don't know. Um, okay. I was listening to I listened to um, local sports radio, mm-hmm. and they made a pretty good point. They were talking about they named all these films, mm-hmm. and after they named the film, they was like, I, "I've never heard of this film. Oh, I've never seen a trailer for it. I've never seen anything for it." Right. You know, so I don't know the. Um, how do you say the protocol of the academy of, right. of the film world but songs don't get nominated for American Music Awards and Grammy Awards that nobody's ever nobody's heard right it's like there's not like 10 people that say you know what that song by Coolio Fantastic Voyage that's the shit <laughs> that's the shit the 10 of us we're gonna make this happen right no it is something that's played over and over and over again the whole year. You damn want to kill yourself to right, it because you, you can't it so take much. it anymore. So these movies, I'm like, like the I don't know the 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 water movie where the where the chick falls in love with the, with oh, the guy the, that falls the in, shape of water. Actually, right, you know, last year. Yeah. You so it, so I'm not <laughs> saying it's a bad movie. Yeah. Um, I haven't seen it, but I would have not known about it if it didn't win. Right. You know, so they named off of these, they named these movies off. Um, I would like to see at least a nomination for the, uh, for some of the movies like, uh, like Black Panther. Right. Black Panther is not some phenomenal story and I'm not knocking the movie, no, I'm no. saying, but it's not some phenomenal story of something we've never heard before. It's, it is the traditional journey of of a hero right and it's a great movie and it's a great story i would just like to have hear them you know them be nominated i don't care yeah. if they win i would just like somebody to recognize somebody other than the three or four ad directors you always hear it's interesting you mentioned black panther because and i don't know if everything's racial or pre or what do you call it politically driven with some of these the way they pick their movies but a legitimate question would you ever see any other superhero movie come up for an Oscar nomination if it was a predominantly white or another, you know what I mean, kind of thing. It's like they're, it's sort of like, like it's it was an Afri- uh, African-American 
uh, led superhero movie, so that's why they made it on the the table for the Oscar nominations. That's that's just the way it seemed to me. The way all that hype was about it being all um, you know like racially driven. I was like, I don't get that, man. I love Marvel, but I think that was a that was a kind of a stretch to get that in there, in my opinion. But I liked the movie. Don't get me wrong. But I don't think it should have just been because it was a black dominated movie. That's kind of ridiculous to me. That's just... Well, if that's it, if that's the category that it gets nominated for, I I, I don't want to see that. Yeah, um, but you get you you get what I mean, though. I mean, that's just kind of a an odd way to, to introduce a superhero film into the Oscars. I mean, there's. Really... I, I will say this about Black Panther: the unique thing about Black Panther that is different from all of the other superhero movies is that there's a very real. Um, is there's a very real story and history in that movie. Yeah. See, because the question the question that they pose to uh, T'Challa and his and his organ you know, his his country is you've had all of this knowledge for all of this period of time and you've watched the struggles of various different um and and, and it's clear you don't have just one ethnic group that fit into the black diaspora. Right. It's huge. You know, there's a lot of people across the world. So they're saying, like, how could you have all of this knowledge and then you're not going to not do something sharing. about it? Right. You know, so, yes, the part about um, the, you know, secret magical metal and the Black Panther and the herb, all of that is um, is mythical, you know, meaning that, you know, it, it's part of the, the lore of the story. Right. But the story of black people in America and black people in Africa abroad, that was real. Yeah. And I think that... That story, you know, people, if they really watch the movie, not just to watch for the explosions and the fight mm-hmm. scenes, that's the um, the real aspect of it. Because if you watch Captain America, if you watch those other things, yeah. there was no entity um, in the in the Second World War called Hydra. No. You know, just so <laughs> th- those, I'm not saying that that's not a good movie as well, but there was some reality to this. Yeah, you know? there's more of a realistic message and, and a theme behind it is what you're saying. And, right. And, yeah. you know, it, it, was, it was based on, you know, when Stan Lee uh, came up with uh, Black Panther, and it's funny, that he wasn't, Black Panther wasn't created by a black guy. Right. You know, so I always wondered why would the creator of Marvel put so, you know, that Black Panther is, is, is pretty untouchable mm-hmm. compared to the rest of Marvel characters. And I think that there would be more got to be revealed about it. But if you go back to what they said, the superhero movie that started it all. Right. It was 1978 or 79's uh, Superman. Superman. That was a movie and not some cheesy, campy superhero flick. Right. It, was, it, it, showed, it showed that Hollywood could produce an actual movie with, with excellent actors. Um, now, the... the the trajectory that it went as far as the four movies, you know, people have their opinions on the third, fourth, and fifth, and sixth sequel. But that first movie, because they had such so little to work with, yeah. Um, that was I don't, and I don't know if it won anything. It might have got like score or effects, or, but I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't Maybe know for music, anything, but you know. But I think that you know whether your movie is based on fiction or if it's based on reality. I mean, if it's a great story, it should it should be recognized. Right. Um, but it is it is a mistake to give the movie um, everybody gets a ribbon type thing. Right. Right. You right. You know because if we're gonna say we're gonna reward this black cast because they did something that now that is true. Hollywood didn't believe they could have an entirely black cast mm-hmm. for a film that it would reach across as many um, ethnic borders as this movie yeah. did. So stereotypes were, were 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 eradicated, but there's not a category in Oscar for that. <laughs> That's what I'm curious Oscar, to hear what Oscar, it what it know, actually is for. If we're yeah. talking about um, best actor, best supporting actor, mm-hmm. best director, or best visual, you know, art. If we're yeah. talking about those types of things, there are other movies that probably would add some stiff competition. Okay. Even the Avengers, Avengers movie. I don't know if that mm-hmm. came out in time to be in selection. You know, it came out after, so it know, may I have. Know. I don't I mean, know. This, you know, there there are people that were so angry because certain movies in the past didn't get nominated. Right. Uh, I think it was the um, you know, the story of NWA. NWA oh yeah. I enjoy watching. Now, that was a good one too for that. However, but. there's a process to be a part of Oscar, and, and I know you know this. You have to submit your film to the Oscar. You have to submit your film to the Academy. Or somebody attached to the film has to, I think. Right, somebody yeah. has to submit the film to the Academy to be reviewed. Right. You can't just have a great movie mm-hmm. and then think because your movie's great, 
that the academy is going to say, hey, hey, you know, we heard you. No, you have to literally submit this movie. And nine times that kind of defeats the purpose, though, too, doesn't it? It does. Nine times out of ten, you submit the movie to the academy before you release it nationally. Yeah, that's that's another flaky thing I thought, too. It's like, it's not even out yet. You guys are already booking for an award. It's like, really? Right. And anyway. that's why that's why it's hard to take it seriously. Right. I that's why I'm not watching it. I'm talking about it. I'll hit the highlights or hear whoever won like tonight or whatever. Well, the most interesting thing about the Oscars is it's going to be who the hell is hosting it after. after that's it. There was nothing. Nobody said anything about a host after or Kevin Hart. After Kevin Hart went through what he went through, um, with the Oscar community, yeah. it's kind of like, okay, you know, what now? Right. <laughs> you know what, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do now? I mean, it, it, I hate to say it, it doesn't have the importance to me that other things have. Yeah. But when, um, what's her name? Uh, Alicia Keys, mm -hmm. she was hosting the Grammys. I was like, oh, she's hosting the Oscars. <laughs> no, that's the Grammys. No, no. They got to mix it up. Different things, movies and music. <laughs> you know, I had to say that in my head. Because right. Because she just pops out. It seemed like she just popped out of nowhere. But that wasn't even, it didn't have anything to do with mm -hmm. it. So I wasn't thinking about the movies the acknowledgments. I'm thinking about the controversy between yeah. Kevin Hart and the Academy. And that's normally what they run it on is what whoever's either the most controversial or they kind of try to make up something, you know, in the media to to figure out how they're either going to come down hard on it or, or you know, it's just I don't get it. And who's this person that is digging uh, into the, the past tweets? That's a very. Let me tell you something. <laughs> no. Let's let's talk about no. Let's don't talk about that. Um, <laughs> I, I couldn't tell you the magical mystery of well, I mean, the the history of who yeah, digs up our past yeah, tweets and our social got, media. You, know, you got um, the, the uh, I the jumped the gun who, on that. But. James, you know the guy that's responsible for uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, James Gunn. There are certain things you have to be careful, right? That you're saying to the public. Okay. Well, he got yelled at or busted out for shit he said like. Ten years ago, before he was even, you know, Marvel well, famous. It was but. ten years ago. However, it is a multitude, over eighty pedophilic tweet type jokes. So when you start saying things eighty times over, five or five or ten. Yeah, that's like, a little bit. I guess that's funny. Yeah, and people can be like, "Oh, okay," but eighty. No, this was something he said multiple yeah. times. Okay, well. Well, they what they did was is they, they said, okay, this is what he said. Uh, okay, uh, I can see how people get offended. And they said, well, I can forgive that. It was just a few of them. Uh -huh. We looked and found that there were like 60 or 80. So it was like, this guy said a lot of stuff. Okay. You know, so I don't agree with firing the guy after he made you billions of dollars. If you really wanted to know that about him, I mean, I work for a, a major retailer, and they have something called a background check. It's not right. magic. <laughs> but nowadays, no matter what you say or do, even if it's a slip, it's like you're condemned from, you know, your your work history. Now you're screwed. Well, yeah, so I mean, you do have to be careful of what you put out into the atmosphere. Oh yeah, the it's when it's printed, man. It's it it's free away. game. It never goes away. But the thing is, it it amazes me though is, what was the reason that they went back to do that? Like he must either put somebody off or. That that's probably really the main reason is he probably pissed somebody off that wasn't getting enough attention or they wanted to, you know, really you know screw it to him or whatever. So like, let's go dig in his back that we don't hear about. Of course, you won't hear the true story, but that's kind of a, a, a shitty reason to get, you know, after two movies and he's done what a, a number of uh, like in, independent hor horror movies too for his name. That's where he really came up on. Um, for someone to slam him after he made Marvel and Disney and whoever's involved, yeah, I mean, all that money. I mean, it's that's two movies with two billion dollar outings. Right. So and and not uh, even to mention everything that, that he created as far as the characters for those movies, he gets some should have gotten some sort of credits for those too. Well, according to uh, I think his name is Kevin Fish, he said that. He said that um, although his, his role had been exaggerated, yeah. how much he committed, he, he um, gave to the MCU, mm -hmm. there was a substantial contribution from James Gunn to the storyline and the phases of, of, of Marvel. I think yeah. going to the next 10 to 20 years, you know, because Marvel is leaving the planet Earth and moving into the galaxy right. and so forth and so on. But in any case, um, it's a lot easier to fire somebody after, after they, they all made, made their money. money. Yep. Made money. 
And that's Hollywood. <laughs> yeah, that, that is Hollywood. All right, so I think we may wrap this up. Did you have uh, anything you wanted to stick out there or let anybody know or shouts out, you know, that kind of yes, craziness? Um, like okay. I said, the film the film is called Death Vision. Okay. Um, we have uh, people that have expressed interest in it, but I'm going to be putting posts on Facebook um, at Tony Brannon. Um, at facebook.com got it so you can just put tony brandon you're going to see me in a superhero shirt you can shoot me uh on an instant message and just give me your email let me know you're interested because i'm going to host um auditions probably going to be about mid-april you know so people who are interested you want you want to increase your reel or you uh want to help make a, a short film uh let us know sounds um, good man and look like i said just look me up on facebook that's probably the easiest way to find me is uh, uh, tony brandon um, because I'll actually have postings, and also you'll you'll be able to be connected to other actors. Um, and that, that's pretty much it. Always want to network, man. I hear you. Oh yeah, that's awesome. Want to thank everybody for tuning in, or whenever we air this. Uh, appreciate all the support I get. Uh, let me give a shout out to um, my family upstairs for being quiet while I can record this without my kids thumping around. Because that's obviously uh, in post. We'll probably have to edit some of that out. But anyway. <laughs> Thanks, for Tony, for coming out, and uh, me, appreciate first, it. First guest. And uh, we'll, we'll be back on here in hopefully you know, a few more weeks and talk to everybody out there later. Peace. All right, so I wanted to give out you know, one more final shout-out to uh, Tony, who uh, gave us a little bit of time this evening uh, from the Red 3 in the studio. Uh, we had a lot of cool stuff to talk about. Hopefully everybody... Uh, tunes back in soon we'll have some more uh, cool guests and things to talk about on here um, over the next few weeks so everybody stay tuned thanks for watching and have a good night